we were just talking. I mean, the bank stocks in particular, some of the big cap ones, moved up appreciably, certainly in the latter part of the year. Um, how important is this earnings season, again, in terms of justifying those valuations and or, to the point Saul was making, pointing towards future, uh, future growth in the stock price? So I think the first thing is, yes, they've moved up and they've outperformed really by about 10 percent since mid-August. But I don't necessarily think it's because they've rallied so much. I think it's because they had recaptured a lot of underperformance. So if you took a snapshot today of the bank stocks, what you would see is, on average, they're a little bit cheaper than they historically are, whether on a P.E. basis, dividend yield, relative dividend basis, or uh, uh, on an absolute relative P.E. ratio. So, so we do think that they still are modestly un, uh, attractive relative to the market. And also the smaller cap bank stocks have underperformed the bigger ones, and those are very much so uh, undervalued relative to the market. But I do agree with the point that really the first quarter is sort of a stopping point for the broader story, which is that there's been a negative operating leverage story here in the banks for like the last six months or so, as interest rates had been continuing to march, it da march down. Now that interest rates appear nearing the end of their, of their lowering cycle, you're probably going to see a pickup in operating leverage, and that's going to be a positive. So it's going to it's going to reveal itself not in the print itself, but the commentary that follows. A absolutely. And I think the commentary is going to be around where do you think your net interest margin is going? Because net interest income is still the majority of revenues for this group. And what are you seeing about loan growth? Now, loan growth has been slowing over the last six to nine months. The margins expected to be down again, but it's going to be down uh, by a smaller and smaller degree as the year unfolds. Um, and then another thing is do not forget capital management. We think over 100 percent of earnings for many of these banks will go back into share repurchase and dividends, which is very favorable to shareholders. And that trend should likely continue. The top five banks collectively spent about $60 billion on buybacks last year, Thomas. you expect that to continue with the Fed keeping rates on hold? Absolutely. So the snapshot of the quarter is going to be uh, record profitability in terms of net income dollars. Balance sheet is as sound as it's been since the global financial crisis. Benign credit quality, so the snapshot of the industry is it's in great shape. The question is, what's happening to earnings momentum? And what's interesting, even though we talk about this, the banks will probably still grow earnings this, uh, in 19, 4 or 5 percent, which will probably still be better than the market. They're going to have probably flat earnings for the first half of the year on a year-over-year -year basis, and then they'll get better in the second half as the margin stabilizes. And, that, and as long as we don't get a credit cycle that shows up or a recession, that's probably what's going to happen. You mentioned loan growth. We're getting some CNI numbers. Uh, Got to go back to March now to see CNI this slow. Why? The economy slowed. The economy slowed, and I think that with the economy slowing, uh, you saw and fears of recession. You saw folks pull back some. Uh, and so that's really what, what we think has happened. So, yes, so loan growth is probably now a 2 to 5 percent type, type opportunity for the bigger banks, uh, whereas it used to be above 5 percent. We're starting to see a return on tangible common equity. I mean, in the high teens for some of these institutions. It's a number we didn't think we'd see, certainly. It, it's remarkable. And then also, David, what's interesting is who's doing it? So we were just talking earlier. J.P. Morgan and Bank America are 16, 17 percent return on tangible common equity companies. That's above a lot of the regional banks. Now, there, there are some outliers, some great performers there. Yeah. But the bigger banks are becoming more profitable which is going to give a lot of credibility to the scale argument, which I think is going to drive more consolidation. What's an appropriate multiple to book, though? I mean, with J.P. Morgan now trading above two times tangible. Well, we downgraded J.P. Morgan at the end of last year as well to market perform. We think it's a very high-performing company. Our favorite of the large-cap banks right now is Citigroup. Why? So mainly for valuation, and we think it's a similar story that we've heard, which is they're going to get positive operating leverage, they're going to grind to better profitability, and they're going to buy back a heck of a lot of stock. Uh, so, so for that reason, we would prefer Citigroup right now over J.P. Morgan. But I agree with the point that J.P. Morgan's results could be very solid. What's the bull case on the small and mid-cap banks that really were left behind last year? Yeah, the, the, the bull case is that uh, it's going to be less challenging in the future. So the, the smaller banks have less non-interest income. So this margin trend of stabilization is actually more beneficial. The other thing is the bigger banks have more global operations. Another story, we just double downgraded the European banks at KBW. We went from outperform to underperform about a week ago. 
That doesn't happen usually, and that's predicated on negative interest rates so to, and, and a continued slow economy. So to the extent that you're a big global bank and you're in that, that market, that's going to be somewhat of a headwind. So, so we've had negative rates for quite some time, though. Yeah, but the, mean, but, but the call had been that they were going to turn and that we were going to see some return. And now they're doing a big ECB review, which won't play out to the end of the year, which our analysts believe means you'll see no change in what it is now. So the, there was a sense that you would see some change, but, but that has been pushed further out in the horizon. And while that's happening, you're seeing ROE for some of these big European banks go to high single digits, while we're talking about Bank America and J.P. Morgan at 17%. Yeah. And that's the difference.